In this tutorial, I would like to teach you how to make this holiday table runner. I'll be teaching you how to piece triangles together in a long row and then incorporate them into this asymmetrical table runner. You'll have a nice, beautiful result, so let's get started. Be sure to check below this video for a PDF of everything you'll need to make this table runner. Hi, I'm Rachel Durstein and today I want to show you how to make this table runner. I have three versions behind me here. The two on your left, I did the quilting on the long arm and the one on the right, I did the quilting on my domestic machine. And today I'm going to show you how to make this one so you can do it right at home. These are all cotton fabrics. This is machine washable and I like to make table runners that you can use all the way through the holidays and they are not specific to any holiday. So let's get started. Today I want to show you how to make this triangle table runner. I have done this in many different fabrics but I like to um, do some festive kinds of fabrics over the holidays. I don't do specific Christmas or Hanukkah or anything like that with my fabrics. I just do something that looks festive. So right now it feels like gray is a really popular color, but I've chosen grays that also have the metallic gold and silver mixed in with them. And this produces a really nice background that you can put your um, flower arrangements on with white and silver and gold accents in those arrangements or gold candlesticks or silver candlesticks with white candles in them and you can really make a nice arrangement for the holidays. So this is one I've already made up and quilted and um, I can't tell you the name of all these fabrics I don't have any more of this background fabric, so I went fabric shopping yesterday, whoops, and um, came up with two other alternatives. Here's one I just finished making up. Okay, it's the same triangles, but the background fabric I found um, at a shop, and it's called it's by Maywood Studio and it's called Pearl Essence. This fabric is actually really old. It's um, from 2014, it says. So I don't know if you can find that anymore. Pearl Essence, but it's kind of a pearly, it's not really metallic, but it's a, like a pearlized uh, design on the surface. So that would look pretty, okay? And then the next one I'm going to do, I want to show you how to put all these triangles together on this one. But the background I'm using here is really cool. It is called Grunge by Basic Gray. And you know the grunge fabrics that are plain, but now they've come out with grunge fabrics that have, it's called Seeing Stars, S-E-E-I-N-G, Seeing Stars. And this is by Moda. So look under Moda, Google Moda, Basic Gray, Grunge, and Seeing Stars. And you'll see this in a lot of different colors. This is a nice dark kind of chocolatey gray that looks great with these um, fabrics over here. Now these two fabrics that I have here, whoops, I got them mixed up. These two here, the dark grays are from Hoffman and it is the Sparkle and Fade, Hoffman Sparkle and Fade. Um, they also come in black and white, but the gray is particularly nice, I think. And then this fabric is kind of just a background blender fabric, and it is by Moda as well. Uh, Modern Backgrounds Luster, and it says Zen Chic on here. I'll print all these out. I do not know what this is, and I don't know off the top of my head what this is, but I will. I can find out, and I'll put it under the video. Okay, so today we're going to use this background, and you need two pieces, 
this is cut across the grain, across the cross grain of the fabric. So you can see a salvage here and a salvage here. Okay, and this is folded. So it's only going to be about um, 40, I don't know, 40 inches wide, maybe less by the time it gets quilted. So this is four and a half inches wide. This is the same across the width of the fabric. And this is seven and a half inches wide. Now your triangles are, I will have a template for you to cut these out. And I hate cutting stuff out. So <laughs> I'll make you a template and you can cut them out. But I got lazy and I, um, I do, I cut these out. I have a studio uh, cutter from AccuQuilt and I ordered this isosceles triangle. It's called isosceles triangle five inch wide by six inch. Okay, five, five inch by six inch. So I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S, -E -E isosceles. That means that these two edges are the same size and then this edge is a little bit narrower. Okay, so this edge is five inches and then the height of the triangle is six inches. So I just lay, I actually just lay the fabric. I cut out a piece of fabric and I lay it on there. Okay, so I would cut this piece out, lay it on there, put my plastic on top and run it through my die cutter. All right, so let me show you how I line up my triangles. Okay, I like the ends to have this gold fabric. So I'm gonna line up one end with that. Okay, so I started with the gold, then I had one of these dark gray pieces, and then in between the two dark gray pieces, I have this real shiny silvery gold piece. And then next comes the other dark gray piece. Piece. So I figured out that if I, let me show you. If I arrange it right, I can get two dark pieces facing this way, two dark pieces facing that way, two facing this way, two facing that way. And my ends have the gold. So you have four of every color plus um, one, two, three, four. I think you need five of these gold pieces. Okay. So that is, let me go over that. We have one, two, three, four, five different kinds of triangles. Okay. Five different triangle pieces. All right. So then on the next triangle, we're gonna do the super light color. It's always nice to have a really light color in there just for contrast, okay? And then we're starting over with the gold and we'll just keep going in that order. Just keep alternating your colors like that. Um, after the gold, then we start again with the dark gray and see they're facing the opposite direction. Then our super metallic going this way. It used to be going that way, now it's going this way. And you just create a nice arrangement of colors. Okay, and then now this star piece was facing that way, now it's facing this way. So you just keep going that way and you're gonna need four of every color and then five pieces of this gold. All right, so I'm gonna show you now how to piece the triangles together. This scares a lot of people. They have a lot of trouble with triangles. And um, I wanna show you how I do that at the machine because I don't mark my quarter inches. I just go by how the edges line up with the edge of your foot on the machine and where the needle intersects. So let me show you that now. All right, I have my tab of fabric in my machine that I'm going to sew off of. So I've put 
a, a little piece of fabric in here, a double fold piece of fabric, and I stitched on it, and that way my stitches won't get bunched up at the beginning. And we have our first two triangles that we are going to put together like this. Now, when you put triangles together, you do not match up your points. It will not turn out right if you match up your points. That's why people get so afraid of triangles because they match up their points and then it gets all wonky and doesn't turn out right. The thing to remember when you're doing triangles is that the edge that you're stitching along, the two pieces of fabric need to be, the two edges, raw edges of fabric need to be lined up. You need your quarter inch foot on your machine and those two pieces of fabric are going to line up with the edge of the machine. Now the only thing in question is how far up do you start this piece of fabric? That would be too far. Do you come way down here? That would be too far down. You see? And the way to determine that is to decide where a quarter inch is from this edge. You want your needle to intersect with the two edges here, with the two pieces of fabric where they overlap. So see how they overlap right there? That overlap needs to be exactly a quarter inch away from this edge. So I eyeballed that, and if I stick it into my machine, and I line up the edges, my needle, I can see, I'm gonna stitch off of this. Get that off of there so you can see a little better. Okay, it's exactly lined up. And then if I look down at the bottom, down here, this is also intersecting exactly at a quarter of an inch. So let me stitch down there. I'm keeping this lined up, quarter of an inch, and there we go. Now I'm going to stick my um, little tab in there and clip that seam, clip this one off, and there you have it. And that's the way it's supposed to look, okay? this edge up here intersects with the edge of this piece and that is a quarter of an inch right there. All right now I am going to press this. We're starting with the one end. I am going to press it to the right, the, the seam to the right. Okay let me go do that. So I have my next triangle that I'm going to sew on there and I have my seam. You can see it's pressed to the right. Okay, I'm going to flip this over, and again, I, I'm not putting this point right at the edge there. That would make this come way too far down, okay? I want the point of intersection here to be a quarter inch away from this edge. So that looks about right. Line up your edges, and look at that. Down here, this intersection of the two pieces of fabric right there is about a quarter of an inch away from this. So I'm going to sew that as well. Okay, and we are going to continue to press to the right. So let me go do that. Okay, this one is also pressed to the right. You can see that. And now I have my next piece that I'm going to lay on top of there. Okay, and I flip it over, right sides together. So, I need to bring it down just a slight bit. All right, so that intersection right there is a quarter inch away from this edge. And down here, 
this intersection right here is a quarter of an inch approximately away from this this edge right here this raw edge here okay and so you just keep going that way and you keep pressing your seams to the right now the last oh i forgot to put my tab in anyway the last table runner i did i pressed all the seams to the left away from the direction i was going and when i flipped it over then um i could not see the top of my peaks the peaks of the triangles i couldn't see them this way you can see them now you can see i didn't um my two pieces of fabric are not lined up very well there but i'm just going to keep going okay keep pressing your seams to the right as you go okay so we have our triangles all sewn together and i'm flipping it over and showing you that you can see the top of each triangle okay the way that i pressed it you can see the top of each triangle right there where the two seams intersect you can see that that's really important to be able to sew your uh, background pieces to your triangle row it just makes it a lot easier and um, also there's not an overabundance of layers of fabric all going one direction okay so we're going to take our four and a half inch piece of fabric and line it up we want this salvage edge to go a little bit past the last triangle point okay so have it come a little past that and then stretch out your fabric and make sure that it is ending up at the same place on the other side so let's check that okay and it's going past that point there okay so that's good all right <clears throat> so we are going to line up our two pieces of fabric so you're generally lining up this selvage with this selvage okay and you put in your pins Now, put your pin in close to this top of the triangle. Just put your pins in all the way across there and just match things up, okay? Now, the important thing is that your needle on the sewing machine is going to intersect with this point right here now you're going to see that some of the points are a little bit deeper down farther than this point is really really shallow okay so you're just going to have to let me see how that looks yeah it's really close to the top edge it's more important that your points are the place where your needle goes into rather than that it's a quarter of an inch the points being really tight points are is the important thing all right so i'm stitching at a quarter of an inch right now because that looks about like a quarter of an inch there that peak right you want to stitch right through that spot there see i said it again all right now as i go over here I'm going to slightly taper up because this is just a little bit more shallow. So I'm going to go right through that point and then kind of look where the next one is and just aim for it. You might think that the seam is going to look really zigzaggy if some of the points are more shallow and some of the points are more deep. 
but it's just a minuscule difference. It's not that big of a deal. And you just eyeball it, aim for that point. Okay, this is so much easier than if you would press these seams so you can't see that point and then you have to put a needle a pin into each point to make sure that you get it in the right spot it's really hard to sew it that way so this way is much easier let's take a look and see how it looks all right look at those points really good okay they are just really pointed they look great so now i'm going to sew the other side on the same way so i'm sewing the triangles down onto the seven and a half inch wide background piece okay and i'm doing it the same way but there's one difference the seams are um pointing the way you know toward the needle and so if you do, if you aren't careful that seam is going to flip over this way so you need to just be careful as you approach it that you press that seam down toward the presser foot and that you get it nice and smooth under the presser foot you're still going to sew right into that point like i did before but you do have to be careful about that seam laying down so just take something pointed to just kind of press it down and go slow as you go over that bump okay there's a bump of fabric there and you want to kind of go slow and make sure that you get over it smoothly this is just something i got on the sale rack and it's a nice gray and then for the batting i use quilters dream batting and for my quilts i use poly select and for table runners, I use even a thinner batting, which is the Poly Request. Um, and I get it in a large bolt because I do a lot of table runners. Okay, so I have layered everything. You want to cut your backing and your batting just a little bit larger than your table runner to make sure that you don't cut it too close. And then I have everything pinned down so we're going to start our basting in the center, go down that way, in the center, go down that way, and then all around the periphery. When I'm getting ready to baste, I want to run my stitches as long as possible. So my stitch length is controlled right here, and I'm gonna run that as long as possible. So you see that line went all the way up. This is when I put it down, the stitches get shorter. When I put it up, the stitches get longer. Okay, so make the stitches as long as possible. They are just regular old straight stitches. And then you want your walking foot. This walking foot comes with the machine. Um, it has several different bottom parts to it. I like the open one so I can really see what's going on here. Okay. So I'm gonna put that on the machine. Now, if you've watched several of my videos, you know that sometimes I do hand basting on uh, my table runners, just because they're easier to, to take out. They take a little longer to put in, but they're a little easier to take out. And then sometimes I do machine basting. Either way, you're gonna start in the middle. We have already set our machine to the longest stitch length. And so let's start here. Needle down, needle up, and you pull up your bottom thread so it doesn't get all bunched up. And you're gonna put your foot down, your presser foot, and just take off straight down the middle. And it does not not it does not have to be an exact middle, just approximately the middle. Okay, and just go right down there. The walking foot kind of keeps the fabric from traveling. It makes the fabric feed through a little more evenly. If I had the regular foot on, you would see this top fabric start really moving a lot faster than the bottom fabric. 
okay? It's still doing that a little bit. That's why I really actually sometimes prefer to do it by hand. But this is a short table runner. Now, I've kind of rolled up one end of the table runner and I am back in the center again. And I'm going to do the same needle down, needle up to pull up that bottom thread, stay in place just a little bit, and then stitch down toward the side. Oops. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, and now I have done the long center and the short center stitches from the center. And now I'm gonna go all the way around the side. Okay, just stitch less than a quarter of an inch along the side. You don't wanna do a quarter of an inch because that's where your final stitch is going to be. Uh, keep it really close to the edge. Okay, and just go all the way around the side like that. One thing about when you're doing a basting stitch on the machine, you need to kind of loosen your the tension of the presser foot. So release that a little bit. And also start a few stitches until you have enough room back here to grab your fabric and kind of pull on that fabric from the back a little bit. Because like I said, this top, fabric will still travel a little bit and to, and then when you get sometimes like say you get up here close to these the stitches you did on the center side and your fabric might be sort of bunched up like this and then you're not you're gonna have to take all those stitches out you don't want that to happen so just slightly pull the back a little bit just to give it a little tension There's no bunching up of the fabric and it looks just fine. So that's what I'm going to recommend that you do if you see that your top fabric is still bunching up a little bit. Now we're going to quilt this with the walking foot on our domestic machine. I'm not going to do this on the long arm like the first one that I did. And so I want to mark the lines where we are going to stitch our quilting stitches. And I like to do marking on my quilts with really cheap chalkboard chalk. Just go to any store, you know, AC Moore, Michaels, um, probably even the dollar store. Don't get marking tools specific for quilting. I keep seeing from judges who are judging quilt shows saying the marking colors are coming through even after you wash it. So this chalk has no additives, it's just chalk. And none of the extra, there are no oils or anything in there that's gonna harm your quilt. And you can just take a, a damp cloth and wipe all the markings off, okay? And I sharpen it with this nifty little, I think this is a makeup, um, makeup pencil sharpener. It's a sharpener that has lots of different size holes in it. And I have used this for years. I love this thing. So I use it for my eyeliner pencil and for my color pencils for quilting. And the biggest hole is perfect for a stick of chalk. And I can sharpen my chalk so it's really, really sharp. And of course, when I'm marking, with this chalk, it gets dull really, really fast. So I do have to keep sharpening it. Um, I decided to just go with the lines of the triangles and continue them on out. And that's the way we are going to do our quilting lines. Okay, just continue the lines on the triangles. So line up your ruler with the edge of the triangle just stay away from the triangle a tiny bit like a an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch see how dull my chalk got already so i had to do about half of those and then sharpen it again but now we're good so i'm going to go to the machine and show you 
a beautiful kind of thread that I'm going to use to do this quilting and let's get going on that. Now that you've pieced and layered your table runner, be sure to watch video two so that you can see how to quilt and bind the table runner and be all ready for the holidays.